Good day, Rudet Bungalan Ragas here. In today's video, me and my groupmates CJ Kasari, Trixie Santos, Diviana Gracia Montibon, and Josephine Ngo will share to you the top 10 Excel features and the 10 basic Excel functions that you're gonna wanna know if you work in accounting or you are planning to become an accountant. This video is in connection with our project in AE113 IT application tools in business. So, let's start with the top 10 Excel features. Number 1. Go to Special With Go to Special, you get to quickly identify cells of a specific type. So, for example, let's say I want to quickly see the cells that are constants and the ones that are formulas. We can go to Home, Find and Select, Go to Special. And we can also get shortcuts to some of the functional piece of Go to Special. So let's say I want to highlight these cells that have constants. I can select these. And I can immediately see that there are cells which are not selected. This is probably because they have formulas. If I go back to Find and Select, click on the formulas, these cells are being highlighted. If I need to, I can immediately color them with different colors. I can remove the values, change the font, and apply any type of formatting that I need. Now, what else is available under Go to Special? Well, this menu here is more complete. You have more options. You can select objects, current array, current region, or even conditional formats. There is a shortcut key for Go to Special. It's Control G. To get to the special part, use Alt S. Number 2 Automatic Subtotals. Automatic subtotals. You can get Excel to automatically add subtotals for you wherever you need it without you having to write a single function. Here I have a list of transactions for the last six months. Let's say I want to add a subtotal to every time a category change. Since the list is already sorted alphabetically, let's now proceed to adding subtotals. Let's go to data. Under outline, we get to add subtotals. First option is, where do I want the subtotals to be added? We want it at each change in category. Next, which function should we use? Well, I want to sum the total amount column. Which column do I want to get the sum? Well, the total amount column. And then click OK. Number 3. Number Formatting Shortcuts Number formats are used to control the display of cell values that contain numeric data which include things like dates, times, costs, percentages, and etc. Number formats only affect how a number looks. They have no effect on the actual values stored by Excel. I have an example of dates here but it is shown as integer values because they have the general format. You can always go here to change the format. But there is an easier way to change the formatting using shortcut keys. Now select the range with the Ctrl Shift down and use the shortcut key Ctrl Shift down. You can see the changes of the format here. In case you'd like to have a 
different tape format, you can use the shortcut key Ctrl-1 to bring up the format child dialog box. Switch to date and select your formatting from here. Now, for this price, if you if you want to use peso sign, you can use the Ctrl Shift dollar sign. This is a simple way to apply number formats using shortcut keys. Number four, formula auditing. Formula auditing allow us to graphically display the relationship between formulas and cells. So let us click first the formulas tab and you can see an option in it. So let's see how to go for trace precedence, trace dependence, remove arrows, show formulas, error checking, and evaluate formula. If you see, I have a data here. And to make you understand how they are interconnected, these are the product number, category, product name, barcode, manufacturing suppliers, date, price, quantity, and the total amount. Once I click this cell I4, it has a formula on it, right? It is the price and quantity that are being multiplied. This time, I want to show you that there are columns that are interconnected with each other. If you still have doubt how they are interconnected, you can go to displays, formulas, and then you can see an option in it, show formulas. Show formulas will show you all the formulas on the sheet. Once you click on that, you can see all the formulas which are written on the sheet. But if you want to find out the precedence, we just have to click the trace precedence, right? Click the first option in the tray in the formula auditing, which is the trace precedence, and it shows the two dots and one arrow. That means that for this cell, there are two cells which are used. If I do not want the arrows, I just want to click on Remove Arrows, and the arrows will be removed. So let's see the next one, which is the Trace Dependence. In this cell number G4, there is nothing, no formula on it, but this cell number is used in some area. So let us click this option, Trace Dependence. It says, this cell number was used in the cell number I4. And if you do not want to display the arrows, just click Remove Arrows. So let's see an example for Evaluate Formula. Now, if you see on the screen, just wait for a while. Now, if you see on the screen, I have a rating calculation, which is equals to 8 multiplied by 2 plus 9 minus 8 by 4. And the answer for the calculation is written on this place. So, how it was done. There's an option the Formula tab, Evaluate Formula. You can see a dialog box that will pop out. Um, some formulas are written here, which have they are calculated. So, if you can see, there is a small underline that is 8 multiplied by 2. So, that will be the first calculated. And if I click on Evaluate Formula, now we can see the answer. In this way, we can see step-by-step -step calculation. And now, we can understand how the calculation goes. Number 5. Conditional Formatting and By using conditional formatting, it can make data easier to read and to better visualize data too. So for example, in this worksheet, let's say for the total amount column, highlight the star cell for the conditional formatting. Then, from the home tab, click the conditional formatting, a drop down menu will appear. So, select the desired room. In our example, we want to highlight the top 15%. Click top bottom rules, top 10%. Now we can adjust the number 15. Then you can choose the color. Yellow tool with dark yellow text. Click OK. Then I also want to add 
position now for natin for bottom. So, click top, bottom loose, bottom 10%, and adjust 15%. Then, I choose the color light will fill with dark red text then click OK. Conditional for mapping, you can also, you can, you can also add data bars, color scales, icon set to easily identify and visualize the data. So, I select icon set, then indicators. And then that's it. Number 6. Remove Duplicates Remove duplicates returns a unique list of values. Here, for example, I have category and manufacturing supplier, and I want to get a unique list for the combination of category and manufacturing supplier. Go to Data. Under Data Tools, we have Remove Duplicates. Now, Notice that my active cell is somewhere in the data set, so when I select it, it automatically picks up my data range. There is a check mark for my data has headers, which is correct. All I have to do is to click on OK. 26 duplicate values found and removed, and 24 unique values remain. This is based on the combination of column A and column B. And of course, you can round this in a single column or more columns as you need. Number 7. Flush Fill Flush Fill On the table here, I have the different suppliers my business has. Let's say I want to get the owner's name from their business name. Typing each name in a different cell will take too much time. So we will use Flash Fill to save time. Now all we have to do is show it what we want and it's going to try to figure it out for us. In this case, I wrote tricks and then I'm going to highlight this range and press the shortcut key Ctrl E for flash fill. Now it understands what I want and gives me the correct words. Number 8. Auto Filter Auto filter is used to filter out different types of desired data in a data range or column. We can also use the shortcut key Ctrl Shift L to quickly filter this data set. We immediately get these drop down boxes where we can filter our data set. You can also select the data that you want to see in your Excel. This way I only want to see the essentials, writings, and stationery in my Excel. In here, I want to filter accounts that contain the word RABS. And I've just added a second filter to this data set. I want to add an additional filter, so let's say for the date. I can pick a specific month or I can use the in date filters. Or you can also add your own custom filter. Now I only want to see January and February. Auto filter in Excel allows us to find, show, or hide values in one or more columns of data. To deactivate all filters, just press the Ctrl Shift L and all your hidden data will show up. Number 9 Data Validation In this video, we are looking for data validation. Data validation for whole numbers, text, and etc. Right now, I have a cell number G1 here, wherein I can type any value that I want. So if I want to restrict the cell, let's say I want all the whole numbers to be inserted in this column. So now, let us use data validation. Remember, I selected this column and after that, I'll go to the data top. In the data tab, we can see uh, data validation and it shows up a dialog box once we enter. It says in the settings tab, it allows any value but right now, my expectation is I can only type whole numbers and we'll give some criteria which is the 2 minimum number and 8 is the maximum number. And once I click OK, the data validation setting, 
is applied in this region. Now, let's enter number 3. But if by mistake, um, I enter 1. When I press enter, I get an error message. So, um, what is the restriction? It is 2 to 8 only. It will only allow values 2 to 8. That is the data validation. Similarly, if I go to the text length, which is the category um, with a character of 1 to 10, for example. So it's the same way with the data validation of whole numbers. I'll do the same for this column. It say it will allow text length between 1 to 10 characters, for example. Let's click OK. So let's enter characters here, for example, essentials. Um, suppliers. What if by mistake I input school supplies here? When I press enter, I get an error message. This value doesn't match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell. So, okay, let's retry. Let's put supplies. So now the text line for category is valid. So let's go to the date. In this cell column, I want to insert only dates. Let's take, for example, um, I want only May, uh, January 1, 2018 to May 31, 2019. So, let's have here the January 1, 2018. And the end date will be May 31, 2019. And let's click on OK. Once I click OK, the data validation setting is applied in this region. Okay, let's type 1 to 18 for example. Uh, if by mistake I input a um, um, date which is not belong to the um, January 1 to 2018 to May 31, 2019, of course I will receive an error message. So let's try again. So that the data will be valid. Okay, we try. Let's try. Let's try again. Okay. So now the date, the date is valid. Valid. So let's go further to drop down list. Let's say, for example, there are a lot of data you want to input. How do you create it? You can keep on timing, so let us use other command which is the, the least. Then let's type here drop. So, as you can see, it is being stored and captured. Then you can select and use it. Okay. This covers a simple example on how to use data validation. Number 10. Pivot Tables A pivot table allows you to extract the significance from a large detailed data set. The data set consists of 50 records and 8 fields. To insert the pivot table, click in a single cell inside the data set. On the insert tab, in the table view, click Pivot Table. The following dialog box appears. Excel automatically select the data for you. So you can choose New Worksheet or Existing Worksheet where you want the Pivot Table report to be placed. So I select Existing Worksheet. The location, then I'll click OK. Then the Fiber Table campaign appears. To get the total amount to the different areas, you can try to that. Rows, columns, values, or letters. 
toilet. To get or easily identify the sum of the total amount of every category and manufacturer, I will I will select category manufacturer and total amount. That's it. So if I want to sort out from the largest to the smallest, sort of largest to smallest, then that's it. So the empty category and manufacturer show the sum of total amount. In the fiber table, you can show any features to easily identify and offer. That's it. Next will be the 10 basic Excel functions that you need to know. The great thing here is they work in all Excel versions. Number 1. The Aggregate Function The Aggregate Function allows you to summarize values and it gives you the ability to ignore error values as well as hidden cells. So, for example, I have here the date, the barcode, the category, the product name, and amount. What will happen if I sum the entire amount column? It will sum. Control shift down to select the whole range. Close bracket and press enter. I got an error. Why? Because I have an error in there. With the aggregate function, I get to ignore errors. Just start off with the aggregate. Then, you get a lot of choices for the type of aggregation you want to do. In this case, I want to sum, so I will go with 9. Next, I get my ignore options. I can, ign I can ignore hidden rows, I can ignore values, or hidden rows, error values, nested subtotal, and aggregate functions. The subtotal function is the older version of the aggregate function. It does the same thing except that it wasn't that flexible as aggregate. For example, you can't ignore error values with subtotal. In this case, let's say I just want to ignore error values, so I gotta go with this option number 6. Next is the array. This is my range that I want to aggregate. Control shift down to select the whole range. The last option doesn't apply to us. It's something you need if you use the small and large functions. Now, we're just going to close bracket and press enter and we get our number. At this point, I'm only ignoring error values. I'm not ignoring hidden cells. If I restrict this to essentials and click on OK, I can still get the sum of the entire column. To ignore hidden cells, I can change my option here. 5 would ignore hidden rows, 3 ignores it all, so I'm gonna select this, press enter, and I got the sum of the visible rows only. So if I change this to electronics, click on OK, I got the sum of this specific category only. Now, let's quickly take a look at another example. I have the total amount of inventories from Trix group of companies for the first three months, and I'm using the aggregate function to sum this. I'm doing the same for the total amount of inventories from DNG Enterprise. Again, another aggregate function. Now, what's the benefit of using this here? Well, if I want to calculate the sum of the amount of the inventories of the two suppliers, I can just use the aggregate function. Go with sum. 
And for my option here, ignore nested subtotal and aggregate function. And then for my array, I'll select this whole range. When I close bracket and press enter, it only adds up these values. And it ignores anything that has aggregate or subtotal in it. If you also wanted to ignore hidden rows and error values, you can switch this option to number 3. Number 2. The round function. Round function. The round function allows you to round your values to the number of digits that you want. So in this case, I have the grand total of the total amount column. As you can see, I have more digits than I need. I want to round this to whole number, and that's when I can use the round function. Starting off with round, open bracket, the number in this case is the grand total of the total amount column. And the number of digits I want is zero. But you can put any number that you need. Close bracket, and then press enter. That's the sum of rounded on whole number. Number 3. End of month function. You want a structured date function in Excel which, which calculates the end of the month with a given date by adding a specified number of months to the argument. The method to use this function is as follows. You want the first argument is the start date. It is the starting date. The next argument is months. It is the number of months before or after the start date. If the number is positive, it indicates the future date. If the number is negative, it shows the date in the past. So in my case, I will just put zero, close parenthesis, and press enter. As this shows an integer value because the, the format is general. So we will click so we will click the control shift pan to change it into date form. It will give me the end of the current month. Drag this down to get the other result. This is an easy way to use if you want to get the end of the month quickly. Number 4. The A date function. The eDate function in Microsoft Excel is used to calculate the date, which is the specified number of months before or after an initial specified start date. In this worksheet, you can see that it contains um, start date and months. Select the cell um, where you want to get the function's result. Click on the insert function. In the search for function box, type eDate and then... Click on the Go button, select eDate from the list, then click OK button, click on the Start Date box and click the cell reference containing the date. And after that, click in the Months box and click the cell reference containing the months and click OK button to see the result. In the same way, you can use the function again to get the result by thumping the months you want to add or subtract the date. Here we are using minus with number of months to subtract from the selected date. You get the result in the selected cell. So this cover um, an example on how to use a date. Number 5. The workday function. Workday. You can use workday functions to calculate completion dates, shift dates, delivery dates that take into account non-working dates. Date is our start date, also we have holidays. Our target is to know the delivery date to the supplier. So we, we use this function equals workday. By using this function, we can see weekends. 
open parenthesis, F4, then the seven days, then default one for the Saturdays and Sunday weekend, then highlight holidays. Then press F so that we can easily drag. Then close parenthesis, then enter. So this is the day which deliver the product. And drag to down. Up to here. That's it. These are the days when the products are delivered. By using the word day, we can determine easily. Number 6. 3D Formulas The 3D formulas are in functions, but they are shortcut to writing functions. Here, I have a separate sheet for each category with different amounts and product name. I want to get the total of these in the total sheet. The long way of writing this is to write a separate sum function and reference each of these sheets. The better way of writing this is to use the 3D formula. Just start off with equal sign. Type in sum. In this case, I'm using sum because I want to add the values, but you can use other functions depending on your requirements. Now let's go to the first sheet and select the range that we want. Now I gotta go all the way to row 13 because some of our sheets have more data. Now here comes the part that is important. Hold on the shift key and then go to the last tab you want to include. Take a look at the formula bar. It's going from the Essentials sheet to the Electronics sheet. Everything else in the middle will be included. Then, close bracket and press Enter. And we get the same result. The advantage of doing it this way is that it is dynamic. If I happen to have another sheet, I'm gonna drop the stationary sheet in the middle somewhere. It's automatically gonna be included in my total column. In the stationary, I have these values. This is the difference between my 3D formula version and the old version. See? Number 7. Sum if s and other if s functions like the average if s and count if s. Sum if s, average if s, and count if s. The great thing about the if s functions is that you can sum Get the average of our count values based on one or multiple criteria. So in this case, let's say I want to add the amount purchased from my supplier Drake's group of companies. I can use the SUMFS function. The first requirement is the SUM range. So here's the column where I have my values in. In this case, it's the total amount column. Now I'm going to fix the SUM referencing because I want to copy my formula down. Next requirement is the criteria range. This is the range on which my condition is based on. In this case, it's the manufacturing supplier's column. So I'm going to select that and fix the cell referencing. Last requirement in this case is my actual criteria, and that's Drake's group of companies, which is located in column K3. Close bracket, and then press enter. And that's the total amount for the supplier Drake's group of companies. Let's write this down, and we get the total amount for each supplier. In the same manner, you can use the average if s as well as the countifs functions. The only difference between the countifs and the other ones is that you don't have the value range. 
it only counts your criteria. Here's a short example on how to use every ship S and count if S. Number 8. The IF function The IF function allows you to check back conditions and then decide on what you want to return if that condition is true and what you want to return if that condition is false. It is used to run a logical test and you are just typically dependent on whether the result is true or false. So here I'm going to check if this amount is greater than 50,000 pesos. I have conditions so I'm going to use the IF function. Now, the first element of the function is logical test. This is what we're checking for. Click this amount and let's see if it is greater than 50,000 pesos. The next condition is what I want to return if this condition is true. So, I want to look here if it is true. I have to put this in quotation mark because it is a text. And then I want to get now if it is false. Plus parenthesis and press enter. Now, as you see, it gives me yes, which means that this amount is greater than 50,000 pesos. You can drag this down to get the other results. Now, the results show that some are no, which means that this amount are not greater than 50,000 pesos. Number 9. VLOOKUP VLOOKUP is one of Excel's most powerful lookup functions. If your data is organized into vertical columns, you can use VLOOKUP function to search for a value. The easiest way to understand this function is to look at an example. So let's get started. Here we have a table of data containing enterprise information. We can use VLOOKUP to locate a product name based on a particular product number value. To get started, let's begin by entering the VLOOKUP command. As you can see, um, the VLOOKUP function takes four parameters. The first parameter we will enter is the value that we are trying to locate in the first column of the table. In our example, we want to search for product number 10. So the second parameter we will need to enter is the table or source of data VLOOKUP will use. The range provided must include both the first column that will be searched for our first parameter value and the column containing our hopeful result. For example, we will enter the range um, B3 to C13. So the third parameter we must enter is the position number in the table where the return value can be found. Since we are looking for the name of a product, we will enter A2, which represents cell C3 to C13. Finally, VLOOKUP's fourth parameter 
A value of false means the VLOOK app is looking for an exact match. Unless you have a specific reason for looking for an approximate match, you should always use false to return an exact match. Now that we have entered all of VLOOK app's parameters, let's complete the command to examine the result. You can see the product name appears. This corresponds to the product number we search for. Number 10. The trim function. This function is so which remove extra spaces from text. So here an example, in this worksheet, the host calls shipment price, which you can see in the in the field of category, there are some spaces. If you if so if you want to remove space in cell, you can use this formula. Find another cell, then begin with equal to symbol. Type equal trim open parenthesis B for or text close parenthesis then enter. Notice that the that the spaces are gone. Next, pull this down up to here. Then that's it. This is the basic way to delete all the leading, training, and in between. Okay, that was our list of the top 10 Excel features and the 10 basic Excel functions that are needed in accounting. So, aside from that, what else do you think should be included in this list? Just comment down below and let us know. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from this video. And please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.